Hey, it's Tony Bruski, and this is our Week in Review. Over the weekend, taking a look back at some of the most compelling conversations and stories that we've covered for you of the last week. Brand new episodes back Monday morning, bright and early, 5 a.m. here on the podcast. This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Lots of questions arising in the last week in the Delphi murder case. Richard Allen, of course, behind bars in a prison, not a jail, which that leads to some questions. And it actually, with what the defense is claiming this week in a massive letter, 100, I believe, 60 some pages deep, that there could be some sort of a a cover up going on here and possibly people on the inside, not necessarily saying investigators, but those possibly even guarding Richard Allen as being part of this plot. Odinism is what is in question. And honestly, I've not known anything about Odinism. I am half Norwegian, which is a Norsk religion. But the claims are that this Odinism was hijacked by some white supremacists and that that was the group of people who actually committed the crimes Richard Allen not being connected to any of those groups. Tell me, Siobhan, when we're talking about you know horrible killers and things of that nature, how often do we see this where it becomes ritualistic or connected to some sort of a religion or a very ancient religion? Yeah, you know, it, it's uncommon, fortunately uncommon. And this Odinism thing c- came up in pop culture in the last, mm, I'd say, five years ago. And you know where it started was with the Viking TV show, the series, and people really got into Viking music. You know, we've had um, here in Portland, where I live, we've had some of these Norse kind of pagan Viking musical groups come through from Europe. They're very popular. And the white supremacist movement did kind of latch on, at least little subgroups did latch on Mm -hmm. to this pagan Norse god kind of thing with Odin being one of them. Probably five or six years ago, I started seeing on social media um, Odin t-shirts or these daughters of Odin. And some of the musical groups came out and said, but there, there is an element of that. I don't think it's very big. I think it's pretty small. Mm-hmm. And if you saw someone wearing an Odin t-shirt, you really wouldn't know, are they a white supremacist or are they just a fan of a Norwegian rock band? You know, you don't yeah. know. I mean, it could easily go to like an Abba shirt or something. <laughs> So, exactly. Although that was, I don't exactly. think that was Norwegian. I think that was Swiss. What is the attraction here? What, how, and we see this so often where some sort of extreme group bastardizes uh, a religion or a group of uh, some way, shape or form for their own uh, bizarre ideologies. What is the attraction here uh, to white supremacists, to uh, Odinism? Yeah, it's really odd. And I don't know that logically you can make it hang together very well. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be this, you know, this movement of take back America for white people. And we have our own history and our own, you know, white pride, that whole thing. And so they reject because they don't like Jews. They reject traditional Christianity and Judaism, obviously. And they've just attached to this idea that they're somehow closer affiliated with the Norse gods. But I really do think that some of this came out of the television programs because weak-minded people can be easily influenced by things that look cool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're still on Netflix. I don't know how many of these shows there are, but Mm -hmm. there are a lot of shows about the pagans and barbarians and Vikings. And I mean, you know, we've watched a few of them and it just as entertaining TV, they're good, you know, but can people actually be influenced to take these things seriously or attach it to another aspect of their movement? And if you look at the whole white supremacist movement as a sort of religious faith, you know, that may not make a lot of sense. It's not based in reality, but there's always people looking to join a club, you know, that makes Mm -hmm. them feel important. Yeah, very, uh, very much so that that exists. Oftentimes we see people kind of join their club, join their group, and it's just kind of a a thing. They're not necessarily out there murdering or killing or sacrificing. Right. But when, uh, so when we hear terms come up like it was a sacrificial killing 
uh, of these kids. I think some of us are not used to hearing that. Kind of like that seems like kind of far-fetched, but uh, is it really that far-fetched? Are these sort of things going on uh, more commonly than we are aware of? I mean, I'm speaking broader term as a whole out there within our society with some of these groups. Yeah, this is where I think it gets far-fetched because Mm -hmm. I do think we would know You know, if there had been multiple murders committed by a pagan religious group or Odinists or whatever, Mm -hmm. and there's absolutely no precedence of this happening. This, Mm -hmm. you know, we have no evidence. This has never even been speculative before. So uh, is this something that we really need to be looking into? Apparently, we need to look into it. But uh, the odds are, in my view, that this is, you know, another creative defense attorney trying to come up with something that's pretty indefensible and grasping at whatever can we get here to make a case and, you know, bring in the the doubt and all of that they try to do. So you get really creative lawyers who can (laughs) come up with all sorts of things. And are there people in the prison wearing, you know, Odin patches or something like that? That's possible. I would be surprised, but it's certainly possible. But is this because they're a fan of a a certain band or a certain movement, or do they have white supremacist leanings? That's all possible. But I think there's quite a leap from that to, and they committed ritualistic murder. It's like, what would the point of that be? You know, it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense at this point. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.